Now I want to share with you some of the work from my colleagues in India. Uh, Dr. Sharma is the Senior Deputy Director General of the Indian Council of Medical Research. And this work, Malka, I think will be of great interest to you because of the work on honeybees. Um, we don't just have to wait for brain cancer to take 40 years to come up with answers. Honeybees have the advantage of being relatively easy to study, and there actually are established protocols for doing this. And I'm going to share with you some of these data, um, and they have been developed by colleagues from a number of countries. Honeybees have different characteristic dance patterns, and they have different jobs. There's the worker bees, and there's the bees that make the honey, and there's the bees that protect the uh, queen. And I don't know all the details, but here's what I do know. If you try to study these under controlled conditions, you can take hives and put a mobile phone in some hives and a mobile phone in other hives that's not on. And what you can find is that after exposing the honeybees to an operating mobile phone, the workers don't come back to the hives. Now, this ought to be of great concern because agriculture depends on honeybees. I think you in Australia have a new business that's developed, I know it's in the United States, where people drive trucks around with hives in it to fertilize crops. Have you heard of this? They, they, t they drive them around because the honeybees are disappearing. Now, there are many different factors that affect honeybees. Climate is certainly one, pesticides is certainly another, but mobile phone radiation could be yet another, and we certainly need to find out if that is the case. 10 minutes of mobile phone radiation daily for 10 days, worker bees did not return to test colonies. And this would be something that could easily be replicated. So now we have to deal with the reality. There are many inconsistent results.